Hello viewers, this is the Mindful Man reading another chapter of Ghost School. This time it was P.E. and to their horror it was cross-country running. They all thought the same thing and they hoped they wouldn't be going anywhere near the cottage. They got changed and about 30 pupils of different shapes and sizes lined up reluctantly. The instructor was jumping up and down like a kangaroo doing warm-ups. He instructed everyone to run round the pond and not to fall in, then through the woods and past the creepy cottage and back again. That's about five miles, he said, as if it was a stroll. It's so easy, he said, you can do it twice. And he wasn't joking. Everyone groaned. His name was Mr. White and he had white teeth to match. He was ex-army and there were rumours he had been killed in action in the first Gulf War. He was six foot four and exceptionally fit. One of the things mentioned to each person who unwittingly enrolled at the school was that they stayed the same age as when they passed. They never aged and their bodies never changed. It wasn't a place for children as they would have been too traumatised. He fired a starting pistol and everyone started jogging, albeit reluctant. Come on, you idle lot, get a move on, he shouted like a sergeant major. He playfully kicked a few of the boys up the bum to get them moving. They ran in a group in the middle so that they could still chat to each other. They were annoyed to be running around the lake again, but they had to make the best of it. They let the jock sprint in front of them and settled into a steady pace. The ground was quite hard and the autumn leaves were dappled by the sun. It was really quite pleasant and they tried to forget about the cottage, but it was hard to shake it off. The teacher stayed behind so they were on their own. At last, least we know the headmaster can't be there again, said Tom. You never know, said James. He may make an appearance. The group soon thinned out and they were leaving the stragglers behind. They came to the end of the pond and headed into the woods. There was lots of shouting and hollering from ahead as they entered. The trees blotted out the sun and the rabbits ran for cover as the people thundered through. Lucy and Anne were huffing and puffing along, trying to chat and gulping in air at the same time. I'm dreading running past the cottage, said Lucy. Me too, said Anne, but don't worry, I don't think anything can happen. There's too many of us. They entered the woods and were surprised at how dark it had gotten. Oh dear, said Lucy, this is spooky. The trees, the trees bent low, as if they wanted to scoop the people up into their arms for later. As they got to the centre, it got darker still except for a small light shining in the distance. What's that, said Tom, it looks like a small torchlight, said James. As they got nearer, it became clearer. It's a candle, said Lucy. Yes, but who's holding it, said Anne. Suddenly, a figure emerged from behind a tree. It was the librarian. She was wearing a long black dress and her black hair was parted in the middle. Appropriately, she looked just like a witch. Her hat stretched out, pointing towards the cottage. She put her hand in her pocket and pulled out a glass ball. It glowed orange and then red. She, she flung it towards the cottage, which was immediately bathed in a bright red glow. They hid behind an oak tree, too terrified to move. The clouds became dark and thunder rumbled through the woods like a runaway train. A few seconds later, lightning split the sky in a blinding, terrifying flash of light. The other runners stumbled into the woods as the lightning split in a split a tree in two. The librarian stepped behind a large tree and disappeared instantly. Hope you like this chapter. Please sub me.